There's been a lot of talk and a lot written about Enbridge's proposed Northern Gateway pipeline, mostly about how risky it would be to run a pipeline carrying diluted bitumen from the tar sands across the Rocky Mountains and other mountain ranges, plus hundreds of salmon-bearing streams. What's often left out of the conversation is what happens at the pipeline's end, in Kitimat, B.C. That's where over half a million barrels of diluted bitumen, or dilbit, would be piped every day. Kitimat sits at the end of a 140-kilometer-long inlet called Douglas Channel, where the tankers will load up with dilbit. If Northern Gateway is built, it would bring 200 to 300 super tankers every year to British Columbia's north-central coast. The loaded super tankers would follow this route through the waterways of the Great Bear Rainforest into storm-tossed Hecate Strait, then past Haida Gwaii on the long journey to China. This is a very large crude carrier, or VLCC. Most people just call them super tankers. There are no super tankers anywhere on the BC coast now. These giants are 350 meters long and 65 meters wide. Each tanker can carry over 2 million barrels of dilbit. Compared with the large cruise ships that sail the inside passage, the VLCC is much larger and less maneuverable. It could take up to two kilometers for a super tanker traveling at 12 knots to stop, even when slowed by two tugs. DFO considers Douglas Channel to be critical recovery habitat for humpback whales. It's a vital feeding area for these humpbacks. The whales return to particular feeding grounds year after year. They thrive on the zooplankton and small schooling fish that are most abundant in the north coast's cold, productive inlets. The mainland channels around Gill and Gribble Islands, including Campania Sound and Whale, Squally and Ursula Channels, are just such habitat. Northern Gateway would increase the greatest risk factors for the whales by adding up to 400 supertanker trips per year to this relatively quiet stretch of water. Scientists reviewing the whale status specifically identified the Northern Gateway pipeline and tanker proposal as a major risk factor for the future health of the population. Douglas Channel is 1.4 kilometers wide at its narrowest point. In Douglas Channel, Enbridge proposes that the tankers would move at speeds of 10 knots or just above 18 kilometers per hour. In fact, many of these giant ships must travel at 12 to 14 knots just to maintain steerage. There's not much margin for error. A loss of power or steering gear here would leave the escort tugs with very little maneuvering room to guide the supertanker through the winding passages of Douglas Channel. Here at Gill Island, near the mouth of Douglas Channel, is where the BC Ferries Queen of the North ran aground and sank in 2006. One study in the Port of Los Angeles found that one in every 100 vessel trips into the port experiences a loss of power or steerage. For the traffic proposed at Kitimat, over the much longer approach through Douglas Channel, this translates to at least two to three losses of power or steerage annually. Should this occur during the navigation of these tight turns, it will be difficult for escort tugs to bring the supertanker safely through the passage. Ask yourself, is this the model we want for the coast of British Columbia?